Hi guys, I'm Patrick Bryce. I'm Henry Gaden. And we are the writer and director of There's Someone Inside Your House, which is a slasher film that'll be coming out on Netflix. This has been a secret dream of mine, actually to be here, but also to bring Henry with me, because uh, I've known Henry was a huge Severin fan for a while. Yep, this is the best gift anyone's given me this <laughs> decade. Uh, I've been buying these just for myself for years, and so this is a, this is a real treat. Well, let's start the party. Yes! I've never seen an Emmanuel movie. Me neither. Should we change that? Uh, <laughs> by the way, I think Sean Baker and I are the only two directors now that have been in both the Criterion Closet and the Severin Cellar. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, <laughs> that's great. Uh, I don't know how the <laughs> fuck I got in there. So this is probably uh, the most controversial release in the entire Severin Cellar. Uh, that I have in my hand right now, Overboard. I heard you guys got death threats about releasing. Well, it's kind of hard to avoid. This is actually a staple of my childhood, this movie, by the way. Much of it was shot in Northern California. And it's also just like, in terms of chemistry between your two leads, and in terms of uh, the love story of Goldie Hawn and Kurt, Kurt Russell, which is something I like to think about um, from time to time. I think it's you know very sweet and lovely that they've been together for as long as they have. This wasn't their first movie together. They were in another movie. Swing Shift. But this is this is really their their love yeah. stories in, in in full full swing and shot by John Alonzo, uh, uh, DP of Chinatown. What? Who I think might have won an Academy Award for that. Yeah. For board. For yeah. <laughs> you, you won't really see uh, <laughs> the 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 sort of like like connection the stylistic connection between those two movies. I, I gotta say, but. Um, a fun and lovely film, nevertheless, and one of the just also just one of the reasons I love Severin so much is that they'll put out you know Santa Sangre, but then also throw in an overboard there. I'll start with the most appropriate for you and I, Dead Kids. <laughs> when we came together to make There's Someone Inside Your House, I'd watched just tons of slasher movies, and he was like, "What are your favorite sequences?" And I, I, shit you not that I watched the dance sequence slash kill sequence to Lou Christie's lightning strikes in this movie at least once every six months. I, I love the tone of this movie because it's so wild and wooly and it's just like playing with satire but also a slasher and mind control and uh, I don't know, did you ever watch the whole thing? No, I, 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 I was waiting till I came here and picked up a DVD to, to watch the entire film, so. Well, here's a needle in the eye. Thank you very much. Now just relax, Pete. It'll be over in no time. Um, where's my? Please guy? give me a porn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a uh, Klaus Kinski freak. Um, I don't know what that says about me, but uh, I've I've watched My Best Fiend multiple times. Uh, I've read Kinski Uncut. Uh, previously titled All I Need Is Love. But this is a film that I was really excited about because it's one that I'd known about for a while. I think they went through four different directors. Five if you count Klaus Kinski. You know, there's lots of shots of him just like on a boat, like staring off into space, like, like floating around that are really lovely. And then also guest stars showing up. Like, I'll be happy if I see, you know, like a, a city shot beautifully sometimes in a movie, you know, regardless of, of how bad it is. And like the way Venice is shot in this movie and the like fog is is really gorgeous. And I think a great document of that time. But then there's an excellent full length documentary. It's just a series of people just talking about what a horrible, awful person he was to work with. It's your kind of thing. Uh, yes. I don't need to be fucked in my ass by Pasolini or Visconti to appear on the screen because I can't appear on the screen without being fucked in my ass. What's the one movie that I should take home to my kids here? Hmm. Do you have a When the Wind Blows? Oh my God. Definitely for your kids. You seen it? All the kid movies here are like horrifying. I think this is under a label for kids, Severn Kids. Yeah. Okay. They actually formed a label. <laughs> When the Wind Blows is, um, is the kind of kids movie that guts you and makes you not leave your house for weeks. Uh, it is about the kindly British couple, just like everyone's lovely grandparents. And, uh, and the, you know, the bomb goes off uh -huh. and they have, they have the instructions for what to do. And, um, and so they, they try to barricade and follow it the best they can to barricade themselves in the house, but they sometimes just need to make tea or, or get some food or just get some air because they're having to quarantine in such small quarters for so long. 
and then it's about them slowly suffering the symptoms of nuclear fallout <laughs> and, um, and dying slowly um, with each other while trying to keep up the routine of their lives. And um, not one of the best movies you'll see, one of the movies you'll never forget. Uh, and uh, I can't wait. Your kids are three and five? Uh, three and four, right? So, now. yeah, I think maybe in a year they'll be ready. <laughs> I mean, one of the things I love that feels like a through line in these movies is the, like, the, the thought of, like, you know, it'd be, a, like, kind of a celebration of re regional filmmaking yeah. and, and the idea that, like, you can make a movie outside of Hollywood and that, you know, a lot of these movies are movies that are kind of sprung from people who were, like, you know, maybe considered themselves and were outsiders, but were able to, you know, gather enough people together to say, like, let's let's dream together, let's make something. And sometimes those dreams are facilitating uh, <laughs> a madman, an absolute fucking madman, who had no responsibility uh, holding a, a movie camera. Don't ever say that. Don't ever say that in my presence again. I don't know if I can fully recommend Annie Milligan's film filmography. Uh, but I, I think it's worth watching just as a document of New York of that period of time and of, of Staten Island. And one of his films, Guru and the Mad Monk, which I've never seen, which I really want to see, was shot in a church a block from my grandfather's house. I've been in that church before, like on, on multiple occasions. And so I just love the thought of like my grandfather like doing his thing in New York while just, just pure obscene shit is being <laughs> created. Uh, literally on the same block. I wish you could I show think. it to him. I know. <laughs> is he the one who was killed by being the guy who renovated his house? Yep, that yep. Would that's be Adamson. Odd. That's who it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that story. No, let's talk Siege. Siege. And I'm going to talk Siege from Ignorance. You, two years ago, I, um, I went and did research about what movies, what great movies had never been released on DVD or Blu-ray that were just stuck like, a, like on an island of VHS. And I scooped up um, about 20 in um, like after two months of research, two of which were Peanut Butter Solution and The Siege. <laughs> Both of which you put out, and I didn't need to pay, I think, like 30 to $40 for each copy of the VHS, <laughs> and now it looks beautiful. Um, so I've actually watched Peanut Butter Solution, but I have yet to see The Siege. So um, I think this even comes in two cuts, I believe. So I'm pumped about this release, um, clearly, since I bought it without having seen it on another format. And then, of course, you guys just put all these great movies out that would have been lost without you. And it's supposed to be great. I So I worked with, briefly, with, uh, hobo with the shotgun director Jason Eisner on a project. He's been obsessed with this movie for a long time and he's actually, him and the director do the commentary track for that. So I was going to grab a copy of that for myself actually just because I'm such a uh, Jason Eisner fan as well. God bless you guys. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Thank you again for having us. This has just been an absolute treat and a joy. Yeah. Uh, Can't wait to live here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and look forward to our movie, There's Someone Inside Your House, that'll be on Netflix October 6th and hopefully released physically by Severin uh, that shortly thereafter. That would be thereafter. a dream.